This lesson covers the following topics. How SPF works to help protect your mail server from emails with spoofed addresses, the format of the SPF record which is published to DNS, and SPF verification settings in Security Gateway. Here's how SPF works. The sending organization publishes an SPF record to DNS indicating what servers are allowed to send mail for the company's domain. So this would be, for example, the mail server or any gateways that would be sending on behalf of your domain or any other devices that are sending on behalf of your domain, which we'll talk about here shortly. And then when an email is sent from your domain, the receiving server checks for an SPF record to verify that the server detected in the inbound connection is a server that is authorized to send email on behalf of the sending domain. And if the SPF record indicates that the server that the message came from was not authorized, then Security Gateway can be configured to reject the message or mark it as spam or quarantine it. If the SPF record lookup passes verification, then the message is accepted and delivered to the receiving mail server and then on to the user's inbox. So let's talk a little bit more about SPF records and how to set them up. Now this would be on the outbound side. So this would be set up by the owner of the domain or the administrator, the, the mail server administrator, for example, to protect their outbound mail by adding an SPF record indicating what servers are allowed to send mail on behalf of their domain. So every SPF record has certain elements, such as the V equals tag, which is technically the version, the SPF version. And they pretty much, I believe they all say S V equals SPF one. So that will be just the standard tag that your SPF record will begin with. The next thing you'll find in an SPF record is indication of what servers are allowed to send mail for the domain. And you can have multiple different entries here so for example, this SPF record has two IP addresses that are authorized to send mail for the domain, actually two ranges of IP addresses. Notice the slash at the end of the uh, IP address so that you can specify the actual range of IP addresses. An SPF record might also contain an include tag, which will include all domain uh, servers that are specified in another domain or subdomains uh, SPF record. So if I wanted to include all mail servers that were specified for spf.example.com as authorized senders for my domain, then I would use this include tag here. And then there's the all tag, which you'll find at the end of the SPF record. This tag can indicate a hard fail or a soft fail. So when a dash or a minus sign is used in front of all, then any senders that are not listed in this SPF record should be treated as what we call a hard fail and uh, treated as unauthorized and therefore emails from them should be blocked. A soft fail, which I'll show you here in the next example, would indicate that you should accept the message but treat it as suspicious. So here's another SPF record example. Again, we have the required V equals tag, the version tag, which is always V equals SPF1. And we have another tag, we have an MX tag, which indicates that any servers indicated in the MX record for the domain should be considered as valid senders. So any servers that are specified, any IP addresses or host names that are specified in the domain's MX records are valid senders for mail from this domain. And then we have four examples of inclusions based on the A record. So any servers specified within any of these four A records are also authorized to send mail for the domain. You may recall that an A record indicates what IP address is assigned to a host name. So for example, if my host name is mail.example.com, my A record will indicate that I want mail.example.com to point to a specific IP address. And here's an example of the A record that I've created for my test host name of mail.example.com. You can also include any IPv6 addresses in your SPF record as indicated here. And these can also include a range of IPv6 addresses. And then finally, this symbol here indicates a soft fail. If you put this symbol at the end of your SPF record, then you're telling 
receiving servers that receive mail that may or may not have matched, for example, the message might be using a subdomain or something like that, then treat them as suspicious but don't outright reject them. So for example, those could be quarantined. And there are plenty of other examples out there of tags that you can add to an SPF record. For example, this is a good resource. mxtoolbox.com has some good examples here of the various tags that can be added to A records. And as you can see, this does provide a good description of each of those tags that I mentioned previously, as well as any additional tags that you might find in an SPF record. And you can use a command prompt in Windows to find the SPF record for any domain if one is published for that domain. And you can do so using the nslookup command. So you might find this useful if you are troubleshooting a mail delivery issue with uh, a message that might have failed SPF or you just want to see if another domain has a valid SPF record. You can use the nslookup command. So if we type in nslookup in a command prompt and then in DNS, there are certain types of records that are considered to be TXT or text records. So an SPF record is one of those. So let's say I want to look up the SPF record for mdaemon.com. The first command is to specify the record type. Again, it's a TXT. And you do that by entering set Q equals and then the type. So TXT and then hit enter and then enter the domain that you are looking up. So again, if I put mdaemon.com as an example and hit enter, this is the SPF record for mdaemon.com. So this is a good example here of how you can look up an SPF record and see the different variations in tags and types of content that can be placed in an SPF record. And again, remember, Earlier in the lesson, when we talked about deploying SPF and creating SPF records, I mentioned that you'll need to consider all of mail servers and gateways and other devices that will be authorized to send mail for your domain because they will need to be included in your SPF record. And here for is an example. So for example, if your company uses any type of marketing automation software such as HubSpot, and you want to authorize HubSpot to send mail on behalf of your domain, then you would want to include HubSpot's mail server uh, information down here as well. So again, there are lots of different variations on how to format your SPF record, and you can find a lot more information on mxtoolbox.com. So now that we've discussed the conceptuals behind SPF and how it works, let's talk about how to set it up in Security Gateway so that Security Gateway can perform SPF record lookups for inbound mail. So in Security Gateway, the SPF verification settings are located under the Security menu, under the Anti-Spoofing section, right here under SPF Verification. And just like with many other settings in Security Gateway, these settings can be configured globally or on a per-domain basis using the drop-down at the top right-hand corner here. and to enable SPF verification, we simply check this box, Verify Sending Host Using SPF. And then you can decide what to do based on the results of the SPF record lookup. So whether that be a hard fail, like we discussed earlier in this lesson, or a soft fail. So with either of these two options, you can choose to refuse the message, quarantine the message, or accept the message and optionally tag the message subject with a series of characters that you can use, for example, if you wanted to configure the content filter on your mail server to look for that subject tag, then you can use your mail server to filter those out. You can also optionally add a given number of points to the message score by checking this box and entering a value in the blank provided. So the default setting is to refuse the message on a hard fail and if you choose not to, if you choose to quarantine or accept the message, then the default number of points added to the message is five points. So I'm going to leave this on uh, refuse here for now, but these are the options you have, refuse, quarantine, or accept the message and tag the subject. And those concepts also apply to the 
messages that received a soft fail result of the SPF lookup. Again, you can refuse those, quarantine them, or accept them. Standard practice is to refuse messages that received a hard fail on the SPF record lookup and quarantine messages that received a soft fail on the SPF record lookup. And just like with the hard fail settings above, with soft fail you can also configure a subject tag and add a given number of points to the message score. And also, further down, you can select this option to adjust the message score for those messages that pass SPF processing. So if a message passes SPF, if the SPF record lookup matches and it checks out to be a legitimate message from a legitimate mail server, then you don't want to increase the message score, you want to decrease it because those messages are being treated with more trust. So you would want to put a negative value in this blank. So for example, if I put a negative three, this is saying add negative three points to the message score. Or in other words, subtract three points from the message score if a pass result occurs during the SPF record lookup. And like many other security settings in Security Gateway, you can configure exclusions, such as those messages from whitelisted IP addresses, those from authenticated sessions, and those from your domain mail servers. Under the Advanced section, you have the option of inserting a received SPF header into messages to provide more information about the SPF processing activities. And now we can look at the message log and find the messages that were rejected or quarantined due to SPF lookups. So for example, if I go to the messages queues menu and I go to the message log under all messages here, you can see all of the messages sent through Security Gateway along with the results of the message delivery attempt. So this makes it easy to find messages that were caught by SPF. You can see there are three examples right here that were rejected due to SPF. So I can click on any one of these, and then I can find the section in the message transcript with message log where the SPF record lookup was performed. And that's this section right here. And so we can see here that Security Gateway performed an SPF record lookup on this domain coming from this IP address. Security Gateway found the domain's SPF policy and determined that it was not a match. And the result then was an SPF failure. So Security Gateway rejected the message and then SPF processing terminated. And if you want to find all of the messages that were rejected due to SPF, you can do a search by clicking this button here at the top. And then under the reason section, select is, and then select SPF, in the drop down menu here, and then click on search. These are all of your messages that failed SPF. Now some of them will say quarantined as opposed to rejected. So those will be listed here as well.